Hey guys, my name is Subin, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to survive your first year. Um, and yeah, I'm basically just going to be talking about tricks and tips that I learned throughout my first year that'll hopefully help you guys out. So stay tuned and keep watching. So I know for a fact that a lot of people are scared to make friends in college. And so here's a little bit of advice. Um, basically for me and my roommates, what we did was when we first moved in um, to like our residence halls, we left our door open because there's like a little magnetic thing that you can like attach to your wall. And so um, you just leave your door open and then hopefully people will walk by and then come introduce themselves. And you can also do the same. You can walk around your residence halls and then also like introduce yourself to people that you don't know or who also have their door open. So that's just a really good way to meet people on your floor. Um, on top of that, you can also sit in the lounge because each um, residence hall has like their own like main lounge for people to sit and work or like talk. So I really recommend that you just go sit there, go do some work, and then hopefully you'll be able to like make some small talk with some people and then hopefully befriend them. Also during the first week, there's a ton of events that go around on campus during welcome week so you can um, meet people and then invite them to stuff because you know it's just a lot more fun to make friends when you're doing something more interesting and lastly i really recommend that you talk to people on the uc davis class of 23 um facebook group because that place is freaking amazing like you don't understand how many people i met because of that facebook group and how many people like I maintained friendships with because of that group. But yeah, I really recommend that you stay active. If you don't know what the Facebook page is already, basically you like post your own profile and then you say like, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. Um, if you wanna be friends, hit me up or whatever. And then people will comment on your post if they're interested. And then also you can do the same and comment on other people's posts. But yeah, that's like a really great way to meet people. And I for sure met a ton of people that way. I actually met my boyfriend that way. Not like not like he's my online boyfriend or anything, but um, initially found out of him through that group. And then we had mutual friends and then things just happened because of that. So, um, you know, you might meet your future lover. You never know. I had a friend that I like really clicked with on Facebook and we talked for a little bit and then um, things kind of fell through, not because like anything happened, it's just like, you know, timing and you can't really like maintain conversations with every single person. But we ended up having a class together and then we became really good friends after that. And now she's one of my closer friends at Davis. So I just really recommend that you guys um, meet people on that group and you definitely will find some long lasting friendships. So really recommend. So I am someone who is really terrible at directions and when I came to Davis that was something that I was super worried about because I was like bro this campus is so big but something I really recommend is to use Google Maps um, especially your first week of school it's really easy to just search up where your class is because Google Maps really does have everything. Um, on top of that something that I learned is that the different room numbers correlate with which floor of the building that the room is on so for example if you have something like room 27 that's going to be below ground but then if you have something like room 100 room 120 that's going to be on the first floor and then if you have something like room 257 or room like 230 that's going to be on the second floor that also works with like room 1000 which is first floor and then room 2000 which is going to be on the second floor so yeah hopefully that is somewhat useful to you guys and that definitely helped me save a lot of time when finding my classes during the first week of school, I know everyone says like, don't bike because it's a mess out there, but I biked and I was fine because I think I'm like a decent biker, I guess. So, you know, like if you're really bad, then just try to avoid the streets. But like, I think because you're trying to find your classes, it might actually be better if you like walk around campus because for me, it was kind of hard to like bike and then also use Google Maps at the same time. So regarding scheduling, I really recommend that you download the Chrome extension for Schedule Builder. Um, I'm not exactly sure on how to get it because my friend did it for me, but I'm sure if you like ask around, you'll be able to download it. Just just know that it exists. It exists, and like it really helps you out because like when you're on Schedule Builder, it like tells you what classes are available and like what fits into your schedule and what could fit into your schedule, but can't because of like the timing 
stuff like that and it, everything is color coded so it just like really really is useful when you have your pastime because like that pastime is like so stressful it's hard to like know every single class that fits in your schedule so i just really recommend that you get the chrome extension also speaking of scheduling um don't take 8 a.m's like i know you think you can do it because you did it in high school but for some reason like the college air like you just it's too hard bro unless you're actually like an early bird i i mean i guess but for people like me who like to sleep in just just avoid it because you're just gonna end up not going to class or you're going to go to class and then just fall asleep so just don't do it bro i think that choosing your professors for classes is one of the most important things in scheduling um Make sure that you use Rate My Professor because that has all of the reviews for that professor and it tells you like what the professor is like and how his grading is. I don't believe in easy GEs because people are always like, oh yeah, take Net 10, take gender studies, it's so easy. But when people say that, make sure that you pay attention to what professor they took because that is really what makes your grade. Um, however, your professor doesn't matter as much for writing classes because it's your discussion TA who is going to be grading your papers. So, um, sucks for writing classes, I guess. <laughs> when school starts, make sure you do not buy your books before you actually go to class and the professor like tells you what you need for that class. Because a lot of the times, the things that you see online are not the things that you actually need for that class. Just make sure you're conscious of that. On top of that, do not buy books from the UC Davis bookstore because those books are all new and you don't really need a new textbook. Um, a much better option is to go to the Facebook groups. Um, I believe they're called UC Davis Marketplace and UC Davis Buy and Sell or Textbook Marketplace, something like that. But they all have um, used books and you can get textbooks on there for a lot cheaper. Another really great place to buy textbooks is Amazon because they do have new textbooks but are a bit cheaper. Something that I was really worried about at UC Davis was getting good grades and especially because like I'm a science major, I knew that I was gonna struggle in my classes because there's just that reputation of like chem classes and like bio classes being pretty hard. So I knew that I had to like step up my game. If you are struggling in classes, I really recommend that you go to tutoring. So there's tutoring in your residence halls, which I believe is from around five to 9 p.m. And then there's also tutoring in Dutton Hall, which is around more of like the afternoon-ish time. I definitely saw a difference in my grades after I went to tutoring because during my fall and winter quarter of when I took chem, I would get like C averages on my midterms, but then after I went to tutoring pretty frequently during my spring quarter, I started getting A's and that was pretty incredible and like a really eye-opening experience for me. So I definitely recommend that you go to tutoring. Another way to get more help is to go to your, your professor's office hours. I honestly haven't been to office hours that much, but I really recommend going to office hours if you have a writing class. Um, because like when you go to office hours, you can ask your TA to like look over your papers and then revise it and then therefore you'll have a stronger paper to turn in. So that's just something that will really help you get better grades. There's a lot of different Facebook group chats for different classes. So just go on Facebook for your like UC Davis class of 23 page and then see if anyone posted asking like, hey, is anyone taking math 17A? And then you can comment and be like, hey, I'm taking that class. And then that person will probably start like a giant messaging group chat. And then you guys can like ask each other questions. And I think it's just a really good thing to be a part of because it's just like a really collaborative environment where you can ask questions and get more help. There are a ton of ways to get involved on campus because we have so many different student organizations. Um, we got like cultural clubs, you got ministries, you have performance and musical clubs, you have occupation related clubs like pre-health or like pre-dental, stuff like that. And there's definitely a place where you can get involved in and if you feel like there isn't a club that matches your interests you can obviously create your own on top of that we have greek life and there's a bunch of different fraternities and sororities that you can get involved in there's like cultural fraternities and sororities that you can get involved in there's professional ones and then there's social yeah so it's just a really great way for you to meet people and just 
be more involved in your community. Also, a ton of different places that you can eat on campus. You got the Silo, Memorial Union, which is kind of like cafeteria style. There's different, or okay, I guess it kind of reminds me of like a mall cafeteria because there's like different um, like restaurants kind of where you can choose what you want to eat. There's like pizza, burritos, or spa. A lot of different options. And then you also have the coffee house where you can get coffee, smoothies, and baked goods. You also have the food trucks which are at the silo and I really recommend you go to those. You can use your Aggie Cash at those places and they're just really good food. There are a ton of places to eat in downtown Davis. There's actually a good amount of boba shops. So for example, there's T4, Share T, IT, Honey D, and Mandro's. Mandro's isn't technically downtown Davis. Actually, it's not downtown Davis. It's North Davis, but I definitely recommend that you go to Mandro's because they have really good bingsu, and that is so good. Like, just trust me, you gotta go. Also, there's a lot of different restaurants like Thai Canteen, Yakitori, Yuchan, Burgers and Brew, Yolo Berry, Cafe Bernardo, and um, halal food and Mediterranean food that you guys can eat. There's a ton of cute cafes and coffee shops like Phil's, Mishka's, Cloud Cafe, Temple Coffee. And then also you have the farmer's market. And I actually haven't been to the farmer's market yet, which is really bad because like, it's just a classic Davis thing, but I heard it's really fun and you should definitely check it out, even though I haven't. And I really should, but yeah. Davis surprisingly has a lot of really fun events for you guys. So during welcome week, I, re I, I really recommend that you go to Sunset Fest, which is basically like a concert and then they have a bunch of different performances and a lot of free stuff that you can take. So it's just a really fun place to go with your friends. Really recommend that. Um, last year we also had the like, it was like a night run kind of with glow sticks and stuff and it's pretty fun. Just a really great way to also like talk to other people and make more friends. Later in the year you have Dormal which is basically like a homecoming but for freshmen and it was not super fun but like you know it's there and there's a photo booth and you can like reminisce on your high school memories so if that's something that interests you you should go to that. There's also Block Party which is basically um, like this event with a bunch of food trucks and they have cool inflatables on campus and I really wanted to go, but I couldn't because I had like a mandatory class. But when it comes out, definitely go because it looked really fun. Then you also have your residence hall socials, which are um, socials that your own RA puts on for your floor. So for us, we had like a pumpkin decorating one for Halloween. We had canvas painting. We had other ones, but I can't remember what they were. But yeah, they're just really fun. And then you can make free stuff and talk to people. We also have a bowling alley at Davis. If you didn't know, it's in the MU. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And also go to the Arboretum, which is like a really nice place where you can walk and enjoy nature. There's like museums and different shows that you can watch, watch on campus. I have been to one show, which is one that my friend performed and it was really good. So just definitely check those out. Davis has a ton of different sporting events. So there's football games, basketball games, and you can go there and get free shirts. So go watch your team play and go get some free stuff. Tuition is very expensive and at least there's a couple of perks that come with being a student at UC Davis. So first off, you have access to Microsoft Word and Excel, which you can download for free. You also have access to a lot of different expensive programs. Um, so something that I found out about is this thing called Virtual Lab. And so you can basically access a different on-campus computer using your own laptop. And then you can use programs such as Adobe Photoshop, After Effects, things like that. And there's way more different options. Those are just like the ones that I can think of on top of my head. But yeah, definitely go check that out. You also have Xfinity on campus. You have um, free printing. Definitely use all of your free prints. I believe you can only do it at residence halls, but definitely use your prints because I think you get like 200 each quarter and they don't roll over. So just use it all. Unitrans, which is like the bus service thingy that we have on campus. It's really good if you're lazy and you don't want to walk to downtown Davis, 
Um, I definitely use it a lot. You can use it to like go to Target. You can use it to go to the airport. So definitely keep that in mind and know that it exists. You also have the gym slash the ARC, which is free with your student ID. I recently found out that you can't use the ARC during the summer if you aren't paying tuition, which I think is really dumb. Throughout the school year, you can use the ARC and I definitely recommend you take advantage of that, even though I'm super lazy and I don't really gym. But I think there's like classes and stuff you can take. Some of my friends took dance classes at the gym, which I didn't even know that was a thing. I know there's like yoga classes. Also, there's something called the pantry at Davis, which is basically a place where you can get food and other products that'll help you like relieve the stress of how expensive tuition is. So I believe you get like three stamps or something like that and you can get food from the pantry for free. So some other miscellaneous advice, there's this thing called Safe Ride where you get the app and you just like order um, a taxi to come get you and then it'll take you anywhere from on campus to off campus in Davis and that's really convenient if you want to go to your friend's apartment at night but you don't want to like walk obviously and you don't have a car. If you're trying to get to and from to Davis from a place that's really far, you can use Brightshare, which is a Facebook group. And people who commute from like SoCal to Davis or like from SJ to Davis usually use Brightshare and it's a really cheap way to get back to Davis. So general advice that I have for you students, um, get involved early because there's actually a lot of places in which you can get involved in. I know during your freshman year, you definitely want to prioritize uh, going out of your comfort zone and meeting new people so joining clubs and joining different organizations is a really great way to do that don't feel like you have to do everything and make sure that you have balance in things that you do because you are still a full-time student and balancing a job and extracurriculars and social clubs on top of that is going to be pretty hard and I know it's very feasible for a lot of people but just be conscious of the fact that it can be a lot I know coming into Davis, like I had a lot of confidence issues with um, believing in myself because I thought like, why would anyone want to hire slash like accept me because I'm only a freshman and I have nothing to offer yet because I don't have any experience. But I realized that a lot of places actually do accept freshmen. It just depends on how you present yourself and how you present the knowledge that you have. So just know that everything is possible and know that you can do whatever you want. No upperclassmen because upperclassmen will help you out so much. They have a lot of knowledge that they can pass down to you guys that isn't as apparent as it seems to you at this point in time. Treat everyone nicely because you never know who's going to be interviewing you in the future. Just make sure you try to be friends with everyone and just be nice. Get a good bike lock because people actually do steal bikes and different bike parts. Um, Honestly, it's not that bad of an idea to have a cheap bike because no one really wants it. Like I had a Schwinn bike from like Target or something and one time I forgot to lock it and no one stole it, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully it was somewhat useful to you guys and um, I already know it's gonna be like 20 minutes long, so if you watch to the end, you're great and please give a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it and comment any questions that you have down below because I will try my best to answer them. So thanks for watching.